Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the Sweeney and television industry. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying EDUCAS GCC Media Studies as the Sweeney is currently one of the set crime dramas for study on component two. In 1974, um, the writers Ian Kennedy Smith and Joe Ballam made a TV film called Reagan um, and it was quite popular. It was part of the crime drama uh, genre and audiences seemed to quite enjoy this TV film. Um, and so they decided to make a TV show based on the same concept and the same character and that's how the Sweeney came about. Being kind of based on that film Reagan from 1974 means that there is already a pre-sold existing audience from that TV film. Um, and that meant that, that it kind of minimises a little bit of risk. You know there's already going to be, at least in part, some kind of guaranteed audience for the show. The company that was involved was Thames Television. Now, it's important to know a bit of background information about Thames TV and also how it's changed in terms of name and status over the years. So it's now called Talkback Thames. So if you try and research it now, it's probably under Talkback Thames. But at the time, it was Thames TV. Um, and so... Um, Thames TV was a, a quite a big TV production company. They had access to Teddington Studios, which is quite a big studios um, for making films and TV. So it gave them good resources and facilities. Um, that meant they also, because they're a big company, had quite a high budget. They had a budget of around £266,000 per episode, which in 1975 was a lot of money. Thames TV was vertically integrated and that meant as well as being able to broadcast uh, on ITV between particular times of the day, they were also able to produce, commission their own products. Um, they actually operated as a kind of parent company to several subsidiaries. One of their subsidiaries was Euston Films um, and it was their kind of film division. So they were very much focused on making um, either films or TV programmes that were made to feel filmic in terms of quality. Euston Films was the production company subsidiary that Thames Television gave the job of producing the Sweeney 2. Euston Films used 16mm film to produce the Sweeney. Now using 16mm film instead of the TV videotape that was being used at the time for most TV programmes made the programme have a kind of film type quality which would have engaged audiences. It did mean that it was more expensive but 16mm cameras at the time were smaller, more compact and more lightweight than the big videotape based TV cameras that other companies were using. And having that smaller, more compact camera meant that they could do a lot more filming on location in real places because it was easier to take the camera out and move it around. It also meant that they could get more fast paced shots, more handheld stuff, more action sequences. And that made the show feel more exciting. Thames Television gave the Euston Films very strict guidelines about the Sweeney and they gave the directors very strict rules about the, the Sweeney as well. So it had to be very particular length. It had to have a certain amount of um, structure and content, it had to focus on particular characters for particular amounts of time. You know, so some characters could have to be on screen for at least 10 scenes, uh, you know, other characters were only allowed minor lines. So there were quite strict guidelines. And I suppose that's reflective of the fact that Thames was a very big company and therefore they had a lot of power and it meant that they could have a lot of control. Um, it's also perhaps reflective of the fact that if you are streaming on terrestrial television with ad breaks at certain periods, that you had to be quite strict about your structure of your TV shows at the time. Making the Sweeney in 1975 was a clear choice by the, um, the writers and directors and by Thames to reflect what was going on in the country at the time. So reflecting some social, cultural, historical context. The Sweeney um, is uh, based on the Flying Squad, which is kind of a branch of the police in Britain. And... Um, the Flying Squad was going through quite a lot of controversy at the time. There were lots of things happening with them in terms of bribery, corruption, etc. It was in the news quite a lot. And so I, I suppose the general public was starting to distrust the police and see the police as fallible and at fault and sometimes not perfect. And so creating a show at that point, choosing to write and produce The Sweeney then, was ref trying to reflect those ideas um, that were happening in the real life. 
a lot of the Sweeney was shot in real locations in and around London to give it a really gritty, realistic feel. However, obviously, because the weather isn't always perfect, they had to have some backup plans for the show in case it was raining or snowing. So they constructed an office based set um, at Euston Films uh, head offices and that set they used to be the kind of police headquarters. So if it was raining, they would aim to film the office based shots on those days. And then on the days where it was dry, they would go out and film all the location based stuff. Shooting at night time in 1975 was quite expensive. You had to have better lighting, better lenses, better cameras. Um, and so Thames Television actually limited Euston Films and said, you know, keep the night shooting to a minimum because they already had a high enough budget as it was and they didn't want to spend more money on that. Because the show was being shown on Thames TV, which was part of ITV at the time, um, it meant that uh, the show and indeed all the television on ITV at the time was funded by adverts. It's a commercial broadcaster. Um, and so it it needs to be um, essentially entertaining. It needs to be mainstream. There's a need to attract audiences to programmes on commercial channels because you need to bring in the audiences to justify the advertising rates that you're going to charge to brands. And so, you know, creating a quite a popular, entertaining show with elements of humour in it, you know, there's reasons why they did that. And that is to try and bring in as, as many audiences as possible so that they can attract those advertisers to the commercial breaks. And it is clear that the Sweeney was successful. It ran for a number of years. Um, it had uh, four, if not five seasons, um, and it led to two further feature films in the 1970s and 80s. That added to more profit for the um, companies involved, having these spin-off products that you can then charge more money for at the cinemas. And actually there was another film made um, more recently with Ray Winston in it, uh, which again was based on the Sweeney. So that brought in new, younger audiences who perhaps hadn't necessarily seen the original show. John Thor is one of the main stars of um, the Sweeney and the part was actually written for him um, by the writer. Um, they, they'd seen him in other crime dramas like Red Cap um, and actually I think and, uh, actually I think the writer um, had directed Red Cap as well um, and so they had experience of him as a star and they knew what he was like so writing the part straight for him. Dennis Waterman already had a set of established fans from a range of programmes that he had been in and that would have brought in audiences too. He'd kind of um, created a little niche for himself in the acting industry as playing the kind of like tough British guy and so he had this reputation for those kind of characters and that would have helped to market the show and make it clear to the audience what to expect. Over the years, the show also featured a huge range of guest stars, celebrities that perhaps audiences would have been familiar with from a range of different walks of life. And those guest stars, those cameo roles really helped to draw in audiences and to help to market the show as well. ITV, of course, has a range of other channels. So things like ITV2, 3, 4, etc. And at some point, repeats of the Sweeney were shown on IT, ITV4 and they were also licensed to UK TV Gold. So the use of those repeats able to bring in more profit for audiences a few years later. In 2005, a DVD version of this series was released uh, by a company called Network. Um, and again, that sort of reflects this idea that changing technology as it as it develops, as it starts to become more popular, companies start to think about what products they can release on those new bits of technology in order to make more money from an existing idea. In 2007, just a few years later, they released another version. This one was an 18 disc version, which included the original TV film Reagan, all four series, all the films and a load of behind the scenes extras as well. So perhaps people who might have bought the original DVD in 2005 might even have gone out and bought this again in 2007 because of all that extra content. So another great way of making more money. In 2012, it was finally released on Blu-ray and this time it had to be released by BBC Studios and Post Production. They had to get involved um, because the film, uh, the TV series had to be restored um, and, and carefully manipulated to get it onto the Blu-ray format. Obviously, Blu-ray is much higher definition than what they were filming on back in the old, you know, in the 1975. So BBC have got a huge kind of um, office where they're able to restore 
restore old footage and they actually took the original 16 millimeter film to that studio and carefully restored it and transferred it onto Blu-ray. And that way audiences were getting a better experience if they then bought it on Blu-ray. In the UK, when the show was released on DVD, the BBFC gave it a 15 certificate, probably due to sort of some of the levels of crime and violence and swearing within the show. However, the crime and violence within the show, whilst it was given a 15 certificate, is still reasonably tame by today's standards. Um, obviously, audiences have become a bit more desensitised because we're used to seeing much more violent and graphic content in the media. So perhaps the Sweeney might be seen as a little bit uh, less graphic now than it was at the time. That meant that when it was broadcast on TV, it was given a 9pm slot on ITV, which again is kind of watershed, post-watershed. It means that the show is uh, sort of aimed more at an adult target audience and they're trying to avoid young children, perhaps, seeing some of the more grisly elements of the show. However, with the show now being available on things like Prime um, and other streaming sites potentially, um, and those being accessible on things like mobile phones, tablets and gaming consoles, it means that the regulation of shows like this is quite hard. There probably are a lot of children who are very easily able to get hold of this. Now, obviously, at the time the Sweeney came out, there was no internet, there was no streaming, so obviously it wasn't available on those platforms at the time. Um, it is now available on Amazon Prime, so people can watch it on Amazon Prime. And use of those more modern streaming sites is a great way of targeting newer, younger, more modern audiences who perhaps maybe were not familiar with it and might be recommended it by the streaming site. It could also target audiences that are older, that do recommend it, that want to revisit the show in a nostalgic way from their youths. The writer of the show, Ian Kennedy Martin, had written a range of books surrounding the character. Um, and those books were re-released when the Sweeney came out with the actors from the show on the covers. So um, Talkback Thames or Thames Television actually gave permission for the images or still images from the show to be used on the front covers of the books. And that way, uh, the publishing company Futura Publications Limited were able to help to publicise the Sweeney um, through the use of these new versions of the books. Obviously, due to the historical time period as well, there was no real merchandise available. Very difficult to make merchandise in the 1970s because A, it was very expensive, but B, there was no internet. Very hard to advertise that merchandise to a range of audiences around the country and hard to sell and distribute without the internet as well. So historically, a lot of these programmes like the Sweeney just did not have merchandise. What they did do to promote the show was um, they actually released a promo episode of the Sweeney to the press. So journalists and, and people who wrote for magazines and newspapers were able to see an episode of the Sweeney in advance so that they would write reviews about it and then put those reviews in their papers or on television, in their magazines. And that way that would help promote the show. They also released a Sweeney annual. Annuals were kind of like books that, like merchandise type books that people would buy, particularly for young audiences. Um, and the, it contained things like comic strips, it contained interviews, stories surrounding the characters. So um, something that was quite a good way of targeting audiences who wanted a little bit more about the show. So that was my easy to understand guide to the Sweeney and industry. Don't forget to check out my channel. I've got other relevant videos about things like Luther, for example, on there, as well as a lot of other GCSC set text keywords and theories. And if there are any videos that you would like that I don't already have, just leave a little comment below and I'll see what I can do.